Hello, it's been a while since I've made another video. I think the last video I said that, you know, I believe the Lord's put on my heart to start doing videos to do with prayer and to encourage people here on YouTube. Um, so, yeah, here I am, ready, giving God thanks for another day, another opportunity. And what I want to do today is just to share with you, to try and encourage somebody on here, actually, who may be going through something and find it difficult. Because sometimes when we go through trials and tribulations, it can be quite difficult. Let's just be honest. Sometimes when we're going through trials and tribulations, we struggle to hold on to the promises of God. And sometimes we think, you know, what's going on? But I would like to start off by reading James 5.11. And James 5.11 says, Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Now we know in brief from the story of Job that he went through a lot um, some of us are going through stuff that does not equal what Job went through. And I'm sure nobody would be praying, really, to go through what Job went through. But I'm sure that just like Job, when a trial and tribulation hits us, we want it to end. And to be honest, when we're going through trials and tribulations, I guess there's not always that thought on our head that, just like it's in James 5.11, that there's an intent outcome that God is predestined for us even through this trial you know God said to Satan have you considered my servant Job and you know that always was like wow Lord you actually put Job up for this um and why would you do that and I believe it's because like it's written where God says that he will not give you more than what you can bear um and I think it's not very often, based on that scripture, do we actually stop and say, okay, if I'm going through this, does it mean that I can actually bear this? And if I can bear this, what do I need to do to bear this? It's not very often when we hear messages and preaching that teaches us how to deal with trials and tribulations. We hear a lot of messages about name it, claim it, pull it, bind it, you know, but you don't really hear much about, you know, when you're going through the thick of stuff, what are the essential tools that you need? And I'm not here to say that I have the full answers for that because I'm going through my own bits and pieces. But what I am trying to do is take God at his word. And I believe, I strongly do believe that if I am redeemed, if God has purchased me through the blood, just like Job, he's not going to allow the enemy to do anything to me that he hasn't granted and if he's granted or asked the devil to consider me for a trial and tribulation um i want to make sure that i come out try you know try with fire but come out like gold because god has intention of it and i believe god's intention is to make an open show of the enemy and to demonstrate that regardless of what we're going through he's in control and secondly we always like that you know, double for our trouble. You know, God was gave back Job so much more than what he already had. But Job had to go through that process to go through that. So if there's anybody out there that's going through something right now, um, I encourage you to reconsider Job I mean, in James 5.11 and really think about that scripture. And I hope that that scripture does kind of like touch and bless your heart. Because God's word is true. And I think as children of God, we've got to learn to stand on God's word. And sometimes God won't allow you to run to a friend or get someone to pray you through or pray you out. There are certain trials and tribulations, I believe, that we're just going to have to be patient. I believe it's in James 5 where it also says to count in all joy when diverse trials and tribulations come to test your faith. And I believe, because I ask God, how can you count in all joy when all hell is going loose? You know, where is the joy in that? 
And I think the joy and the comfort comes in knowing that you're knowing that regardless of what's happening, that there's a plan, there's intention. You know, like God said to Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you. You know, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You know, when God gives us these scriptures, I believe he's given them to us so that when our time of testing comes, that he's given us everything we need. And we can count in all joy because we believe in the truth. We believe that God is protecting us regardless of what we're going through. We believe that God is in control regardless of what's going on. But that's where the joy, I believe, comes from. I'm also mindful of David, you know, when his people turned against him, the Bible says that David went and encouraged himself in the Lord. And I think when these trials hits us, we've got to learn to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Because sometimes, just like Job, you have your friends, your sisters, your brothers that come around and everybody will have something to say. But let me tell you something, if God has intention out of this, no matter what people say, people might come to encourage you, discourage you. Some people might come to pass judgment on you because you're going through something. They say, why? If you're going through all this, you must have done something wrong. But I'm here to say, according to James 5, 11, that God has an intention and a plan out of this. You're going to come out victorious and you're going to go out strong. So I'm going to say a little prayer according to James 5.11 and I just hope that, you know, you'll run to the word. I mean, if there's anything I can say to anybody, you've got to ask God for a word for your soul when you're going through trials, something that you can hold on to and keep praising and keep praying because you've got no choice but to come out of this. Otherwise, God becomes a liar. You know, the devil is a liar. God is faithful, he is true, and the devil's plan is to muck around with your brain, tell you that it's not going to work out, tell you that everything's going to end up being really bad, tell you all this rubbishness to try and separate you from God. But God loves you, he has a plan out of this, he's sovereign, and he knows what he's doing, okay? So Father, I just want to give you thanks for your loving kindness and for your tender mercies. I want to thank you, Father God, for your Holy Spirit. I want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you, Father God, that no matter how hot the fire, you've promised, Father God, that it will not overtake us, it will not burn us, Father God. I thank you that you are with us, Father God, through every trial and tribulation, because you've promised never to leave us nor forsake us, Lord. Now we know, Father God, that trials come and sometimes, God, they catch us off guard and sometimes they feel so difficult to bear. But I pray, Father God, that whoever's going through something right now, Lord, I'm asking for your peace, Father God, to overshadow them, Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you to bring them into a place of prayer, Father God, where they can sit before your mercy seat. That you can send a scripture, a word to their heart. Father God, that will become an anchor in their soul. That while they're going through their storm, Father God, that they can remember that you are there with them in the boat. That you have not abandoned them. That you will not leave them. And that the enemy, Father God, will never be able to triumph over their soul. Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to strengthen Father God, you are people who are going through trials and tribulations right now, Lord. I ask you to place your hand around them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Allow them, Father God, to experience that joy, Father God, that you spoke about when you said, count in all joy when diverse trials and tribulations come to test our faith. Knowing, Father God, that the testing of our faith work out for patience, Father God, and allow patience to have its perfect work in their life. I pray that you'll bind doubt. I pray that you'll bind unbelief. Father God, I pray that you'll shut the mouth of the enemy from speaking intimidation and lies and trying to mock people in their head for their beliefs in you, Father God. He may be saying in their ears that if you're a son or a daughter of the Most High God, why are you going for all this? But I pray 
Father God, that you expose the lies of the enemy and that you, Father God, will just overshadow his lies, cast them out with the truth of your word. Send your Holy Spirit, which you promised, Father God, to lead us into all truths. And whoever's going through something very difficult right now and feels by themselves, Father God, help them to find solace and encouragement in your word, Father God, to know, Father God, that though weeping may endure for a night, there has to be a morning of joy, of celebration, Father God, that they will overcome, Father God, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, Father God, that once they've gone through this trial, they will know you more personally and intimately, Father God, as their, 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 their deliverer and their strong tower. I know that you have a plan for their life, Lord, and I know, God, that at times, trials have been hard and I myself have found it difficult at times to hold on to you for difficult times but father God I pray in the name of Jesus touch their hearts touch their souls make a way father God where it seems like there's no way and have your own way father God in their lives in Jesus name I pray amen be encouraged read the word encourage your soul and put the devil to shame you've got a purpose God's got a plan for your life. He didn't call you in vain. He loves you and he wants you to know that he's there. The truth is we ain't going to know God as a deliverer unless we need delivering. And we're not going to know that Satan is a liar unless we know what the truth is. And you're going to know the truth by reading the word. And therefore, when you have the word and the truth abiding in you, you'll be able to cast away what that which is a lie. Okay? Be encouraged. God loves you. And I really hope that this prayer encourages you to seek God in the word and, and, and be blessed. Amen. And, you know, maybe leave a testimony um, of how God has brought you through. But, you know, it's, it's God loves us. And so many people have fallen away because they fail to believe and because they choose to listen to a lie of the enemy. And I know God does not want that for you. OK, your wor life is worth living. And this trial has to come to an end in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.